Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Just Two Dads with my co-host, Mr. Sean Francis. I am Brian Altunian. And on this, the last week of Autism Awareness Month or Autism Acceptance Month, whatever you want to call it, uh, we are joined by an, um, an amazing duo here, a father and son. Uh, you are going, you're in for a, a huge treat. Well, I'm excited about this. I'm in for, uh, I'm, I cannot wait for us to jump into this. The power of the human mind, what it can actually do, and how it defies what we consider a typical experience. Um, you're, you're going to meet an amazing young artist, and his capabilities uh, are, are absolutely incredible. Um, so stick around for another episode of, of Just Two Dads. <laughs> Awesome. Welcome back, everybody. I am Brian Altunian along with Sean Francis. Episode number 131. We started this process about two and a half years ago. Um, just two dads talking about uh, the issues that we were dealing with with uh, our children who um, fall on that special needs, uh, you know, the, the continuum, the spectrum, if you will. Uh, Sean's son uh, uh, on the autism spectrum, my daughter with some learning disabilities, and the challenges that we as men face as we deal with. Um, uh, you know, all of the elements having to do with, with the special needs issue and the fact that not many dads and not many men jump into this conversation. And so we started talking about the issues that were very real to us. And we thought, why don't we have a, um, why don't we just have, why don't we start talking about this? And as we continue to meet amazing people in our community, we really wanted to shine a spotlight on the great things that they were doing. So Just Two Dads was born. So before we get into today's episode with our amazing guests, a couple of thank yous to go around. First of all, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, please feel free to throw comments uh, on the screen. We'll, we'll throw them on the screen if we can. Put your comments in the, in the comment box. If you're catching us after the fact on our YouTube channel, Just Two Dads, um, also leave messages. Please like and subscribe. So boost those algorithms. Let's get the word out to as many people as possible because the content continues to be fresh and continues to be applicable and continues to make a difference in the world. Um, if you're catching us on podcast outlets everywhere, thank you. Uh, and we appreciate you listening in and letting us into your day. And if you want to reach out to us, send us an email at wearejusttodads at gmail.com. All as if it's written one word, we are just two dads. There's two T's in there. We are just two dads at gmail.com. And if you're catching us live on the radio at WSTX AM radio down in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Thank you again for listening. Uh, I want to thank Sean Hall, who's out in Hawaii, who does all of our all of our production work, keeps us on track, keeps us in line. He's an amazing guy. And uh, folks like Billy Footwear, who create adaptive footwear uh, for folks in our community as well. Always a big sponsor and supporter of what we're doing. We have so many people that we can thank. There's so many things for us to talk about. Um, we'll put them in the show notes afterwards, but really want to get into the conversation today. And so I'm going to throw it over to my to my partner in Thrive, uh, my business partner, my colleague, my family, my 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 close friend, Mr. Sean Francis, to kick us off today. Sean, how are you feeling today? People must be tired of me answering that question the same way, but each day I have like a real new reason to say it. And today is no exception. I feel blessed and grateful, generally speaking, and especially for today's show. Um, you know, this is, this is going to be, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm thankful for our platform and, um, the opportunity that we have to connect with great people like our guests today and the difference that they and we get to make for those that are within sight and earshot. But, uh, our guest today is a, a, a young man, a gentleman and his son. I think, first of all, I want to, to say to him, uh, publicly, you know, we have a, a deep affinity for those of us who are men in the role of dads raising children with special needs. And he does not do so alone. He is, uh, um, you know, part of a team, you know, with his wife, but his son is 10 years old. And he made a comment earlier showing us some of the artwork that his son has done. Hey, a 10 year old isn't supposed to be able to do that, but you're going to find today, who are we to say what is or isn't supposed to be done? What is it? What is in fact, um, you know, normal, what is typical. And I just look for, forward to a great time with our guest today. So please welcome uh, Dave Villick and his son, Tiger. Welcome to Just Two Dads. Welcome. How you guys doing? We're good. We're fired up for today's conversation. <laughs> Hi, Tiger. Hi, Tiger. So 
Look, so, Sean, I know, you, I know you're going to jump in and ask questions. <laughs> and by the yes. way, Dave, we do this, we do this all the time. We uh, we sort of jump in on, on on top of each other's all the time. So we, we really have two two stories to, to talk about here. One is obviously we want to hear everything about you know Tiger and what he's doing and, and what you guys are doing to support his amazing his amazing work. And then and then Dave, you're a great story as well as an advocate. And we want to talk about. Well, I don't want us to miss the opportunity to share with people the work that you do as an advocate for folks with um, you know getting access to benefits. So I just want to be clear that. We kind of have two paths to two two parts of the story to, to go over. So, Sean, I just wanted to kind of help throw that in there so we can. I know that you were going to go down that path, but I just it was on top of my mind. Not not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. Um, you know, we generally begin. Um, if you've taken a you've gotten a chance to look at any of our previous episodes, you know that we generally begin by you know having you talk to us a little bit about in this case, you know, your own story and chronologically leading that into Tiger's birth and, you know, and, and diagnosis, Dave, you probably don't look at yourself as a hero. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, you are, and heroes do the, you know, the simplest things that have the biggest impact and, val and value. And all heroes have superpowers that derive from their origin. So, you know, the way you were raised, where you were raised, all those things have an impact on how you deal with the day that we refer to as the never day, the day that your child is diagnosed and you're told all the things that they're not going to do. And I can't wait to hear that, especially considering how much of those odds you guys are just completely smashing on a daily basis. So why don't we start with that um, and get the conversation rolling? Okay. I mean, you want me to go from when I was born? <laughs> I mean, about your family I mean, that kind of leads you. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're you're well educated, and you're and you're yeah, again, you're an advocate. You're, right. you're high level of intelligence. So clearly, your upbringing. You know, just talk about that. You don't have to dig too much. Share as I much mean, as you want. We we grew up really poor in my family. Uh, my mother was a disabled postal worker. My my dad mm. he uh, left when I was three and didn't hear from him again. Wow. And. Uh, you know, it was really tough growing up. We were in Riverside, California, and uh, we got to the point where we couldn't afford to live in, in L.A. anymore. And we moved to Eureka, California. It was a lot cheaper up there. My mother went to college. And, uh, you know, we lived in government housing, had food stamps, you know. And I, I remember walking around. Eureka is not a rich town. I mean, it's it's in the middle of Redwoods. It's isolated. It, it's a poor city, but I remember looking at anybody who lived in a house and I thought, man, how rich these people are. They, they have a house, not realizing they're, they're poor too, but I mean, you know, everything is relative. Um, but I always knew that we were different. I mean, we weren't in our situation because my mom wasn't, um, capable. She's smart. I mean, she's really smart. Um, but just by circumstance, um, and, and that mm -hmm. happens to people. And, uh, you know, in the government housing, we, we realize we're vastly different than the other families um, that were there. And uh, my mom talked to me when I was in, uh, gonna start high school in ninth grade. And she said, I can't afford to send you to college. So if you wanna go to college, then you're going to have to get good grades. You're going to have to do sports. You're going to have to do all the clubs. You're going to have to do all that. And so that was kind of my goal when I was in high school was I had to do well if I wanted to get out of the situation that I was in. Um, I didn't go to parties. I, you know, I, I didn't have too many friends. Um, and, you know, when people would ask me, you know, in high school, what are you going to do when, you know, when you, grow up, I, I would just say, I, I don't want to be poor. Mm. I, I didn't really care what I did. I, I didn't want to be poor. Now, I was really good at math and really good at science. And so I went to USC and, you know, I got a chemical engineering degree. Wow. And, yeah. uh, you know, I had one of my bosses tell me, you know, as an engineer, you're not going to be rich, but uh, you're not going to be poor either. Uh, so, you know, that that's kind of where I was. I, I was an engineer for 10, 10 years and um, I, I left engineering uh, two weeks before 9-11 and went to law school, which is either the best timing ever or the worst. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't know where you were on 9-11, but I was uh, I was in college uh, 
uh, giving some instruction and I'll help broke loose at the law school. I tell you that. Yeah, um, but it, it really derailed my plans because I, you know, as an engineer going to law school, you think you're going to go come out and be a patent attorney. I mean, that was, that was my, my plan. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, it didn't work out that way. My my GPA my first year was three four, which is pretty high, and I couldn't sniff a summer job. And wow. uh, I got rejection letters from every firm, and finally I got one that said, "We, um, you know, because of nine eleven, we're really cutting back our summer program, and we're only hiring summer interns into our intellectual property uh, department. And since you don't have a technical background," Uh, we are not going to consider you for a job. And I went to that firm and I went to see who wrote the letter. And they said, well, that was a receptionist who quit two years ago. Oh, my gosh. And uh, I did get in front of an attorney and he said, because uh, I told him, I said, look, I got 10 years experience. I get an engineering degree. And he said, the fact that I would go in there and call them out meant that they made the right decision. Yeah, good for you. So... Uh, <laughs> Going to work for a corporate uh, law firm, um, just, I, I lost that ambition. And mm. uh, my mother had a social security disability firm, um, you know, since I graduated high school. Oh, wait, wait, let me just clarify. Yeah. So you went in and called him on it and he said, made the right decision. I'm thinking that they made the right decision in hiring you. They made, he's saying they made the right decision by not hiring you. Is that what he's saying? That's it. I gotcha. I'm sorry. Hey, by the way, I still say good for you. For going in there and clarifying that, that, well, that's a, I mean, that was a good move anyway. And it my mom told me to stand up for myself when I was good a kid. 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 Advocate. Right. You know, I mean, I, I I did get in a few scrapes when I was a kid, and all my mom wanted to know was, did I finish it? You know. <laughs> <laughs> good for her and you. Wow. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so you know, I I've never really been one to shy away from uh making myself heard. Um so since I graduated high school, my mother had graduated from uh, from HSU, um, and she went on to law school at New College of uh, California, San Francisco. And she moved up to Eureka and started a social security disability firm. And she, you know, helped people. Basically, we say we help people who can't help themselves. Sure. Uh, one of my law professors said, we fight the good fight. And... Um, I had nowhere to go my first uh, summer after law school, so I went to help my mom. And uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, <laughs> I was our worst receptionist ever. <laughs> I... <laughs> Do any of us know what we're doing the first year after school? I mean, really? Well, I mean, so... we're 10 years as an engineer, but I never had to meet with the public. I never had yeah, to yeah. the phone. I never had to file forms. I. Uh... Sure. I, I did calculations. I, I went to chemical plants and, you know, you know, would walk a pipeline or something. It was com completely different. And mm. uh, and then at the end of that summer, my mother's partner died and I, I watched her die. She had cancer and I watched her die in the in the uh, hospital. It was, it was terrible. Um, I never never seen that before. Um, but my mom, you know. She wasn't there, and it, she was actually in court. And we, we were trying to get her out of court to come see her. Her partner died, and um, my mom just she lost it. And she said, "I can't, I can't do this." She said, "You you can't go back to school. You got to stay here. You got to run this law office. I can't do it without you." Now here here I am, you know, ten years as an engineer, a couple months being a really bad receptionist. All of a sudden, I got to run a law firm. Wow. And, and, and it's not a big law firm. I think my mom had 60 clients and, you know, they purposely kept it small. Um, so I, I did that. And I, uh, I started looking at the law firm as a business. And I, you know, qu questioned my mom, like, why do you only have 60 clients? Because she said, if we've got 60 clients, then we stop answering the phone. We stop taking new clients. And I said, well, everybody who calls on the phone, you know, that's, you know, it, a law firm is a business. I mean, it's potential money that you're walking away from and people need help. Sometimes you don't have to give a lot of help. You just have to know what help to give. Yeah. And so I analyzed her 
law firm like it was a business and wrote a business plan. And um, by the time I left after that year, she had 120 clients. Excellent. And uh, when I finished up uh, at SMU, I went to SMU for my law degree. Um, she said, why don't you come work with me? And I had uh, ambitions of going to China or wherever and, and doing joint ventures or something. And she, she said, no, she said, come, come work with me and you can go to China all you want. And so I did that. And uh, she paid me $4,000 a month. This is in 2005. I left the job making, you know, 6,000 a month. And after law school, now making four. But I, I just need, needed to be paid enough to pay my bills. That's all I cared about. Are my bills right. going to be paid? Yeah. And uh, so we continued to build the the firm when I got out of law school. I think there were up to 180 clients. Wow. wow. I think we maxed out about 250. We're, but we're up in Eureka. It's really isolated. Um, yeah. And her income went from a, a gross of 60000 a year up to 900000 Holy cow. Nice. That's <laughs> incredible. Dave, if you don't mind me, if you don't, if you don't mind sharing as much or as little as you mind sharing, can you tell us about your mom's disability? Well, um, my mom's a, a big lady. I mean, she's five foot eight when she was 11 years old. And uh, she worked in the mail room at the post office and she had to carry 100 pound sacks of mail. Yeah. And one day she hurt her back and they said, well, you've got this congenital problem with your sacral vertebrae. And they put her on civil service disability. And at the time she had two little kids at home and she's married and she thought, I'm going to get paid and stay at home. Well, this is a great deal. Sure. But then, yeah. you know, within a year, my dad was gone. Mm. Um, wow. So that was, that was a big change. I mean, I remember having Christmas where, you had every toy and then Christmas where there was nothing. Um, uh, so that's, you know, how she became disabled. Now her doing social security disability wasn't a choice in as much as it was an opportunity. Right. Um, her, her partner worked for a, um, a nonprofit that handled social security cases. And then the nonprofit decided they weren't going to handle social security cases anymore. So her partner came to her and said, look, I've got 30 files. It's just instant business, I guess, instant law firm. So right. she started doing that until she realized, hey, you know, this is making money. Maybe we should just do this. And so she specialized in that. That's great. So, I mean, that obviously helps to define a lot of the advocacy that we were going to talk about. So you, so to talk about then, you know, move a little, a little forward and you're meeting your, 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 your wife and then children and, you know, and then you guys made some other decisions. You've moved out of California. Oh Talking yeah. <laughs> you know, what's funny. I don't know if you saw that when Brian said you, you had a look on your face, that was pretty straightforward. And then it's, it's funny how our soul speaks and sends words out of us without making a sound. Brian says, tell us about a little move forward and your wife and kids. And you spiritually change right before the camera, as, as you said that, and, and you just lit up. I think that's so fantastic and beautiful. Well, um, my wife is from Thailand. Tiger's mom's from Thailand. And I had people for years tell me, go to Thailand and, and go on vacation. And I would only think about movies like The Island. And I thought, man, if I go to Thailand, I'm going to end up in jail. And, you know, they're going to throw away the key. And I didn't want that. Uh, I, I was literally in an airplane one time in, in Bangkok where I could have got off the airplane and gone around and done stuff. And I just too too afraid. But uh, I decided to go with a friend of mine and then... Uh, he backed out, and then I went online to see if I could find somebody to help me be a tour guide, and, and that's how I met uh, Tiger's mom. She was a, a zookeeper um, in uh, Chiang Mai. She uh, graduated from uh, Meito University in Chiang Mai as an animal keeper. Wow. And uh, she's the nicest person I, I ever met. Um, that's beautiful. What's so her name? Her name is uh, Jin Ju Ra. Mm -hmm. And uh, her nickname is Jae, which means peekaboo. Huh. <laughs> That's beautiful. I like um, it. So, uh, you know, I, I brought her here to um, the U.S. and we've been married um, now for 11 or 12 years. I think 11. 
<laughs> what, 12? 12, probably 12. I'm going to get in trouble. Always, <laughs> always guess, always guess higher. Always guess higher. higher yes. Well, this anniversary was last week. So. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> so um, we were in Eureka, and um, you know, Tiger, um, you know, is is born, and we could tell something was up immediately with him, mm -hmm. and. I, I was telling everybody, I, I think he's autistic. And people said, well, you're projecting, you know, I, I mean, myself, I, I was diagnosed by a psychiatrist about 12 years ago, 13 years ago. He, he, he said, you have extremely high functioning Asperger's. I said, I got an engineering degree and a law degree. I said, no shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it all goes people together. Are telling me for 10 years, I had Asperger's. Perfect sense. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of what kind of things did you see? And I'm so fascinated by this because, you know, my wife had two daughters from her previous marriage. Uh -huh. And so girls mature faster than boys. And then me being a first time father, I hate to say it, but I, I, I've said it many times and I always will, which is that I thought everything that Elijah did was cute and on point and I didn't see what was missing. I didn't see the milestones and, you know, and I grew up with younger kids, you know, hell babies, that kind of thing, but I just, I didn't catch any of it. What did you see that had you thinking that something was not quite right? Well, when he was three months old, he would stare at the iPad. I mean, he's just laser focused on this iPad. Like he's studying it. Hmm. I mean, you couldn't get his attention and I mean, that, that was the first sign to me. Um, and then he wasn't uh, talking. He wouldn't uh, respond to his name, um, things like that. And then one day uh, when he was walking, um, my mom saw him flapping his arms and she said, oh, that's, that's a sign of autism right there. And I was like, really? Because you know, when I dealt with autistic clients in, in our law office, they weren't severely impaired because they would already be on SSI. Um, right. And I didn't deal with any kids. Um, so I, I didn't, wasn't really familiar with stimming. And uh, so she said, yeah, he's flapping his arms. And then we realized, well, you know, he twirls around in circles for, you know, an hour if we let him uh, oh. or stomp his feet or shake his head. He was doing all these things. Um, so we were pretty sure he was autistic and then, uh, you know, they, they won't do a preliminary diagnosis until he's 18 months. Right. So we finally got the doctor to refer us to the regional center. And when she made the referral, just when she made the referral, I dropped to my knees and I cried. And, you know, the doctor's like, you know, it's we don't know if he has autism and, and we and it's not like he has cancer or a terminal diagnosis or anything and i i said you, you don't understand when we have a kid in this country we always think this kid's going to grow up and be president i mean that's what we tell their kids right be and anything at that want. moment i realized tiger's not going to be president now given our history of presidents lately <laughs> i was just going to say i was just going to say by the way, we've had on our guest um, uh, Constantine Anthony, who was elected to the Burbank City Council as an adult with autism. And he and the way they do their city council, they the council appoints the mayor. Today, Constantine Anthony is uh, a, an adult on the autism spectrum and the mayor of the city of Burbank. It's like mm -hmm. back to the future. You could be mayor, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mayor. right. Yeah. You could be mayor. And by the way, not probably. Yeah, never mind. I won't get into politics, but, but we probably have some some politicians that have had that are on the spectrum at some point. I, I would agree. Right now, I, I wasn't upset at that Tiger's autistic. It's just it it shattered this this dream I had. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I had to reevaluate what was a realistic goal for my son. Yeah. Yes, it's the morning we go through. We, the, 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 we lose the child that we did that we never had. Yeah. Yeah. We get that. Um, so, I mean, he, he started going to special beginnings classes when he was 18 months. Uh, he started getting uh, behavioral therapy at home two hours a day, five days a week. California is good that way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I remember when he was about three, the, uh, the, 
psychologist, a PhD psychologist at the school called me up and she said, you know, Tiger's having petty mal seizures. Hmm. I said, no, he's not. And she said, oh, yes, he is. I, you don't know what petty mal seizures are. I said, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> and I said, well, what's he doing? And she said, well, he's staring off into space at whatever, and he's just so fixated. They can't get his attention. They're snapping their fingers in his face, waving their hands, can't get his attention. I said, he's ignoring you. And she said, oh, no, no, how, how do you know he's ignoring me? I said, because you didn't say the magic word. And she said, well, what's the magic word? And I said, where's mommy? Oh. And they said it, and he just snapped out of it. So he would go into these little trance-like states. His therapist called it Tigerland. Tiger now, go into Tiger Land. And then one day I just decided to say everything possible until I got a reaction from him. And when I said, where's mommy? He just snapped out of it. So he was listening and taking in all that information. But whatever was in his head, I mean, he's focused on it. Wow. So, um, man, there's so much to unpack there. Dave, let, let's back up just a second. Yeah. What are the, the, what are the, the type of seizures that you're referring to? Are those the kinds where... We they talk about our kids possibly having like high numbers, like hundreds, if not more, per day, where they're just very silent. Is that what that is? I I, I wouldn't say that's a petty mal seizure. If you're having hundreds of petty mal seizures a day, you got to fire your doctor. What's a uh, what is a petty mal seizure? A petty mal, a, a grand mal seizure would be oh, oh the opposite of a grand mal. Okay, go ahead. Though. A go petty ahead, mal sorry. is just a very small seizure. Small. You, you you may phase out for about ten seconds or so. It's not going to involve, uh, you know, uh, convulsions or, or anything like that. You just kind of mm -hmm. kind of just phase out for a little while. Now, with Social Security, if you have more than one petty mal seizure per week um, on an ongoing basis, that would be listing level for uh, uh, seizure uh, disorder. Uh, grandma would be one per month. Uh, and that's with medication and whatnot um so yeah if you're having hundreds a day that was oh my god that would be okay okay terrible. and then of course the the grand the grand mall is obviously huge i had never heard of penny mall uh i obviously heard of the, the grand it's mall just a seizures, minor, minor seizure and in our firm we would have people take a calendar and mark on the calendar when and where they were when they had these seizures so that they could show the judge, you know, I've been keeping a log of this um, mm -hmm. over the past year, and this is how many seizures I have, and they can look at their blood results and make sure that they're taking their medication, that they're compliant. Um, gotcha. So anyway, Tiger wasn't having seizures. Tiger, yes. he, he goes into Tigerland. Um, <laughs> he still does it. Um, but I want to commend you for that, though, because – like you said, and again, this is where we talk about heroes and our powers and sometimes not even being aware of the powers that we have. You just broke it down all matter of fact. Yeah, you know, he wasn't paying attention. So I went through these gestures and words to figure out which one would connect. That takes intention, compassion, and love. And I commend you for that because on one hand, that might be like, well, who would do anything else? You know, there's some parents that love their children that may not break it down to that point to figure out what it is. So for you to be able to tell the teacher, you didn't say the magic word and figure out what it is, you know, that, that, that's, I, I speechless I'm, I'm, at that point. Go I mean, ahead. with Tiger, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't pick Tiger up until he was three years old without him screaming for two hours. Mm. So you've been watching him here. He yeah. seems very calm. Very calm. All right. Well, this is not the kid <laughs> before he started drawing. And, and yeah. we'll talk about that later. Yeah, I want to yeah, yeah, launch yeah. into that. I want to launch yes. into that. He would scream for hours sometimes. If he lost a toy, he would scream for seven, eight hours. I mean, and he wouldn't tell you what, what the problem was. And right. it's so frustrating. Yeah. Uh, we, we wouldn't take him in public. We wouldn't do a lot of things because we just. I know. Yeah. It's there. Yes. too hard. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it it kills you. Yeah, what, yeah. And what I, I mean, I I would invent ways for Tiger to interact with me. Like I would put a uh, a blanket over over my head, and then he would be curious and climb under the blanket with me, and we would just hang out under the blanket for an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the only interaction I would get with Tiger. 
You know, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't hold him when he was there, but I could be with him. Right, right. Um, to this day, if I'm not if I'm not on the freeway and my son is in the car with me, he's going to ask me. He's going to read a street sign, and then ask me to repeat it every mm -hmm. single one because one day he had a meltdown and I started singing the name of every street that we went by. It calmed him down. Uh -huh. That was at least five five years ago. And now I have to do that every time we're in the car. So you do I mean, what you can to be like, what's going to work? What's I mean, you, you find what works. You find yes. what works. So well, I told you Tiger would melt down for several hours if he lost a toy. And we used to get these little tiny dinosaur toys and stuff. They come in a, in a container with 20 toys. And he, right. if he lost one, it was, it was on for hours. Hmm. Yeah. So we, we got rid of all those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He only has big toys now, stuffed animals. He really don't have, yeah. he, he doesn't really want toys. He has stuffed animals. He, he can't lose them. So, Good hey. for you guys too, because a lot, a lot of people would say, no, we need to keep all of them in place so we lose none. But you took the inconvenience of, you know, the moment to achieve some peace down the road. That, 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 that's great. I commend that. Yeah. I Boy, mean, Brian, Tiger having that milk down for several hours isn't good for him and it's not good for everybody else sure right so we we have to find out why and and you know uh, overcome it i mean um I, I just looked at it like it was a, an environmental hazard in a home sure so we just remember removed anything that we thought was a hazard for him yeah but what i love david is that you guys continue to find the things that would work and, and search for things that would, you know, could engage him and, and, you know, give him some, uh, an outlet and some focus. And I'm, and I, I want you to tell the story about, uh, and first of all, let me just say this. Um, you know, I've now seen you're on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, you're on, you know, all social media, you've done a ton of <laughs> you both, I know together and I've done a ton of, uh, of, of, uh, interviews with, with, with news outlets because the story is so amazing. So, you know, I've seen it and I, you know, and Sean, if you haven't seen all of them, it's definitely worth, you know, looking at all of these. And so I've heard a lot of the, a little bit of the backstory, but clearly now in context, it makes sense. You're looking for ways to engage. And so what led you to get him his iPad that started him on this path of, of, of being, you know, such a brilliant artist? Well, it, it wasn't an iPad. It was, it was just a little drawing pad, drawing pad, pad you know, like 20 bucks at Costco. And I got it for his fifth birthday. And, you know, he, he just, he just drawn something, you know, on this with his finger, but he, he held up a toy, a little, one of those little dinosaurs I told you we, we got rid of and used it as a reference model as he drew with his finger. Now it, he wasn't drawing like really good. It was terrible. But I said, why is he using a reference model? He's five years old. This was very unusual. Now we had been looking for something very unusual for five years because I mean I knew in you know our firm that these kids would always fixate on one thing. There'd be one thing that was just get all of their attention and and so we were looking for what was that one thing gonna be? And yeah. and you know, we look back on it and we think, oh well, Tiger's always done art, but we didn't see it that way. He he obsessed over uh the old lady is swallow a fly. And so we thought, oh, he's just obsessed with that, that song or that cartoon or, you know, yeah, the book, The uh, Hungry Caterpillar. You know, he would make The Hungry Caterpillar out of blocks and Legos and, and Magna blocks. And, you know, he'd draw it. He would make it out of uh, Play-Doh. I mean. Amazing. He. he and, and the detail, I mean, it was every little piece and every page. And I just thought, well, he's obsessed with this story, you know. I wasn't thinking he's doing art because we had we had an art pad that he could draw on. He never used it. He had a magna doodle, never used it. Um, but when I saw him, it was sicker than a dog holding up a toy and drawing with his finger. I, I told my wife, he's going to be an artist. And she laughed at me. <laughs> I, I think I was right. Uh, <laughs> I, I think she still wants him to be a pianist. And, and I've heard you reference the fact that because of an engineer using a reference, right? Using a reference to as a model is is lead you to that that conclusion there, right? 
Well, and I've known some artists, you know, and over the time, and I, I just knew that using a reference model was something that, like in high school, maybe in high school art class, they would introduce reference models. But for a five-year-old kid yeah, who's had unusual. no training, what the heck is he doing? Yeah. And so um, we had made um, we had made the decision to leave California at that time. And uh, there was other things that happened in our family uh, that I'm not going to talk about, but uh, sure. it was just time for us to leave California. And, and the law business had uh, shrunk dramatically. Let's just say the internet age was really bad to a tiny law firm in the middle of nowhere. Sure. So I was looking at if we expand, we're going to have to go to another city. It's going to be three, four, five hours away. I said, well, why not just go to the East Coast? And that's what we did. Okay. Um, so we still had the law firm in California, um, but we moved to Newtown, Pennsylvania. Never been there, just just showed up <laughs> and there's snow. <laughs> um, and uh, when we got to Newtown, I got Tiger a three foot by four foot whiteboard and a bunch of whiteboard markers. And he just started drawing all day and all night and, and he just wouldn't stop. He would obsess over numbers and letters, and that's uh, hyperlexia. Uh, mm. And then eventually he started doing them in different fonts. Like he'd do the alphabet mm. in this font or that font and bubble font. and Bubble font, I saw font. that. Yeah. And I thought, How does this kid even know what a font is? You know, right. We, we talked to Rosie O'Donnell a while back, and, and, and she's like, oh, is he that kid that draws in all the fonts? And I said, no, no. And I, I didn't know that could be a thing. <laughs> he could do it. <laughs> Um, and, and then he started making animals to represent the letters or pictures that represent the letters. And then he made the letters into animals and then they would interact. And, and then he started drawing pictures from his favorite apps and we well, got really good. Yeah. And, um, you know, people ask, where did the autistic tiger character come from? I said, well, when your name is tiger and you draw a lot, you draw tigers. So, um, he, he, he just, I can't explain it. He he would just wave his finger in the air, you know, with uh, with a marker on the whiteboard, and it would be a it would be a chicken, or it would be a frog, or it would be. I mean, he he didn't draw a body and a head and legs. He just kind of did this like a one line drawing, and boom, it was there. And I said, "This is unusual." Yeah. So we we knew something was up with him, and and we were thinking we should put this on YouTube, but we, we didn't know anything about internet. Um, you know, YouTube is a TV show. We didn't know anything about filming and would people really want to watch, you know, five, six year old kid draw? I have no idea. So we, we held off on that for a long time. David, you know that people watch YouTube to see others, uh, uh open play boxes. games, open, <laughs> box. open, yeah. a, open yeah. a package. Like, People will watch the internet for any reason. Yeah, well, Tiger can open packages. So if you guys want to send him something, <laughs> he is good at it. <laughs> That's funny. I, I mean, I, and I've, I put up on the, on the, um, on the screen the autistictiger.com, which, which is, uh, it's, a, it's a link tree with various, various links that you can go and see some of the artwork. And, and I will say the sophistication of the art um, was, it is amazing, and he continues to to improve and draw. Um, I definitely want, you showed us something before we, uh, before we signed on. And so I, I definitely want to see that the picture again, but there was a progression and he's getting some training now. Is that right? At 10 years old, he's getting, is he getting some in an academy? Is he getting some support? Uh, not, not at the present time. He doesn't even get art training in school. Um, we, we were in Pennsylvania for a year. Then we moved to the, the beach in New Jersey. Um, and then during COVID, um, you know, this is something your listeners need to understand. During COVID in New Jersey, they did distance learning. And at his school, the regular kids got five hours a day, five days a week on distance learning. And I have no idea if that's enough. But Tiger's special class, they got 20 minutes twice a week. That's it. What? And, and you told me about I that. to people in that. Iraq like you do. Like, how is that possible? You should have gone to court. Well, they had emergency powers. They could do anything they wanted. They didn't care wow. about Tiger. They didn't care about anybody in his class. 
and uh shows you the difference between states as they treat you know our children and education system and you know support for special needs kids well we've we've learned a lot about virtue signaling mm. okay. that has been a big buzzword around us because there's a lot of people out there who say they support tiger or want to you know they want the the feel good of saying they they help tiger or they support him but when it comes to action it doesn't occur Huh. And the state of New Jersey was right there. They said, oh, yeah, we love him. you know, our special needs kids. No, they didn't. They didn't care about him at all. Interesting. Um, they even lost him on a bus one time. I, no. I kid not. For oh over an hour, they knew, had no idea where he was. Oh, my God. They had I've... a new bus driver who got lost, didn't want to call for help. That's crazy. And, and nobody questioned, like, <laughs> where is this guy? I, I mean, <laughs> so... We picked up and moved, and, and moved to Florida. And is Florida a better state for the kind of support? First of all, they didn't do distance learning during COVID in Florida, right? They were open. No, yeah, they were open. So that what we looked at is where can Tiger go to school now? Yeah. And I voted for Vegas. My wife voted for Orlando, which meant I got outvoted two to one. <laughs> uh, and and she she wanted to come here for Tiger. She thought it was best for him. Now we had already reached out to an art school here in Orlando. Uh, because we were curious, would a school want to take him? And he was seven years old, and I think their minimum age is 10. And they said, yeah, we would take him as a student, because uh, where we were in New Jersey, there were no schools. Hmm. So it's crazy uh, to see his work and think that there's no place to nurture besides home. Um, well, I mean, there are art schools here. We just, you know, it costs money. Um, yeah. It's not cheap. And Tiger can't do a class um, on the computer, you know, over a medium like this. Um, I mean, he just won't engage. It's got to be one-on-one -on -one, uh, yeah. private lessons. Um, so anyway, uh, when we came here, uh, Tiger, I mean, we moved, we were literally right next to Disney World. And Disney World wasn't selling annual passes. And so we couldn't go to Disney World. And Tiger was a little depressed because he knew we moved here and we weren't going to Disney World. So he didn't want to draw the first few months we were here. And then I, his mom started working at Amazon and I thought, well, we, you know, I got to do something with Tiger on weekends. So I just put Mickey Mouse on the whiteboard and said, draw it five times. And he'd draw it. And then I thought, draw it five more times. And he'd do it another five times. And then we did a lot of characters and, and he started getting good <laughs> at drawing characters. It, so, yeah. it, you know, that was 2020, um, probably November of 2020 before he ever started drawing characters hmm. other than his own character. And within three months, he was on the Channel 6 News drawing Mickey Mouse. You know, his, his special teacher at his school, um, I, th I think he was in second grade. And uh, she said, well, the county fair is happening and he can submit up to three pieces. <laughs> and she said they had to be farm themed for some reason. And I said, okay, when do they do? And she said, tomorrow. Oh my but God. We, we had him <laughs> draw a few little things on, you know, Mickey Mouse and a couple other barnyard animals. Mickey Mouse in a, in, a, in a farmer's outfit with a farmer's hat. I saw that. Yeah. And, and well, he got three blue ribbons competing against the middle school kids at the county fair. Incredible. So then he ended up on the Channel 6 News. Um, and I thought, well, if he's on TV, he should be on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, you need a logo. So I designed our logo using one of his character drawings. And then when I was done with the logo, I said, oh, my God, it's too good. I mean, we weren't even on YouTube at the time. <laughs> he got this great well, logo. It's, <laughs> it's so interesting. People are human beings. are We are such a trip. I'm looking through the Instagram because I looked at some of the other things. And there's one where he's drawn what looks like, you know, homie the clown from a living color. Somebody says, like you know, con yeah, somebody goes confused. Why do his drawings have outlines like from an art shadow box? Does he really do all the draw? Like people, that's the one thing you got to accept that people are going to look for something to, to, to question. I mean, he's sitting there drawing it on camera from beginning to end. But right. yet <laughs> They still don't believe it. So that's why we film everything we are as transparent as anybody out yeah, there last year i mean tiger finished 
uh, third grade last year, and we went to Ringling College in Sarasota and had an admissions interview. Okay. Wow. Now, we were thinking proactively that maybe instead of high school, he would just go to art school. So we wanted to find out what he needed to do, but they were just blown away by Tiger, and, and they had a lot of suggestions. I said, when you go to yeah. Comic Cons and stuff, you need to have video because nobody's going to believe this little kid is drawing these pictures. Yeah. So you, we, you we know have what that says? You know, I was just going to say, I'm sorry. You know what that says, though? Like, like, I'm sitting here asking these questions. We always talk about questions are more powerful than statements. I'm thinking of my son, not that he necessarily, I want him to draw like that, but but what's his thing? What might he be able to do that I could tap into? I'm even thinking of myself, and it might be things that I already aspire to do or I might be working towards, which is we should see what Tiger is doing and ask questions of ourselves and the limitations that we put on ourselves. That doesn't mean you gotta, you're gotta you going to jump up and draw as well as he does, but it amazes me that one would arrive at a conclusion of, you know, is he really doing that, even though he's on camera drawing it from beginning to end, versus having questions about their own limitations? I, I just that, that just amazes me. I mean, we've had a number of people tell us that Tiger is a role model for the autism community. And we we take it a step further. It's a, he's a role model for anybody. I mean, if he can do Thank what you. he does, imagine what you can do. Yeah, That's for sure. Like, exactly. People well, think his his talent isn't drawing. You guys understand that, don't you? Yeah, his, yeah. His talent is hyper focus and hard work. Yes, right. Draw, drawing is the vehicle, not the, not necessarily just the whatever talent. he yeah. decided to do. He was going to be great at it. Yes, because he just he gets in that zone. He just you know when he was three years old, the regional center asked me what his biggest problem was, and I said, well, he gets so focused on things that he's he's oblivious to dangers around him. He might get hurt. Exactly. And they said, exactly. well, what's his greatest strength? And I said, well, he's got this unbelievable ability to focus. He's going to do something great. I just yeah. didn't know why. By the way, those yeah. are always two sides of the same coin. <laughs> Anyways, right? You're so focused that you may not be aware. Um, so, Dave, tell us about – so a couple of things. First of all, you were at New York Comic Con. You guys went oh, yeah. to New York Comic Con and had a little booth there. People uh -huh. were showing. Um, that's, that's, that would definitely want to hear about that experience. I spent a lot of time in the, uh, in the, in the comic book world. And so I did a lot of San Diego comic cons and I know okay. a lot of folks in that, in that space. Um, so the fact that he, he, you know, he got some space, was able to show his stuff that that's absolutely amazing, but he now is doing, I mean, I'm not now, but he was, he's drawing upside down. He's doing things that are like <laughs> highly skilled artists work very hard to do. Right. Well, this is a yes and no. Okay. Um, Tiger can draw upside down. Anybody can draw upside down, but drawing upside down as well as him, that's that's a special talent. I agree. Tiger is wired differently. Yep. And he took to this immediately. Um, last year, we met with a Disney artist. His name is Dirk Wonderlich. He does Disney Kincaid paintings. And I mean, I, I met with him in Magic Kingdom. And I showed him a couple of Tiger's drawings and he's like, oh, wow, he's great. He, you know, even better than I was when I was a kid. And and I said, but Tiger has draw, uh, difficulty drawing uh, faces and, and details, especially female faces. I said, what could he do? And he said, well, there's this book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And if you go through the book, that'll help solve all these problems. Well, that book is written for adults. I mean, I can't explain it to Tiger and Tiger can't read it. Yeah. But um, about a month later, I saw a video on YouTube. It said uh, the best art lesson ever. And it happened to be chapter four from that book. And the lesson was drawing upside down. And I thought, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way he's going to do this. But I said, well, if Dirk recommended it and it's in the book, let's give it a try. So we always try to push his boundaries anyway. So I put Mickey Mouse on the whiteboard upside down. And Tiger's like, no, man, I'm not going to do that. And uh, I said, just try, you know, it's a whiteboard. So I didn't even pay attention. And I look back and he's halfway done. Wow. And I couldn't grab my phone fast enough to record it. So you'll see that video on, on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and then I immediately took him into our studio and he did it in ink on cardstock. And I got the picture here if you want to see it. Yeah, but show sure it. Sure do. Please. So this is his first ever drawing of mickey mouse upside down wow and this is no pencil 
is the ink on cardstock. I've heard you say that. Ink. Okay. It's no not cards. perfect, but you know what? Oh my God. I couldn't believe I'm watching him do this. Incredible. Incredible. By the way, comic book artists always start with penciling. Like it's penciling and then it gets inked and then it yeah. gets colored. We always look at that like it's cheating, but we still yeah. think it's cheating. So we've had a lot of artists say, when did he transition from pencil to pen? I said, no, he went from pen to pencil. Amazing. And he only started doing pencil because he was doing upside down and it, he was having difficulty getting the the image uh, centered and scaled properly doing it upside down. So we started having him use a pencil. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, he, he got really good at it. You know, this this was his 10th ever upside down drawing. This is the one he used at all the Comic Cons to freak everybody out. It's Daisy Duck. It's his first drawing he ever did all in pencil. Incredible. And he did it about two weeks after he did that Mickey Mouse. This is outrageous. Yeah. He's nine years old when he did this. Yeah. Incredible. By the way, he's got, and I love the fact that you have an engineering background. Will you show that the, um, uh, his, the, the what you showed us uh, before, the deconstruction, like he did a deconstructing Mario from uh, Mario Brothers and, and a deconstructing. Well, th this is the last, last one that we put on uh instagram and this is a dissection of a smurf it's originally done by a, a gra graffiti artist named nichos okay a tiger's 10 years old and this is just yes. outrageous it's and amazing he, he was so focused when he did this drawing and so patient and calm now tiger loves drawing creepy things that's mm. Something, Tiger, you like to draw creepy things? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his favorite show is Ridiculousness, and and he likes to watch, you know, interesting videos. But the, the fact that he can draw this, he, he laughs hysterically, but then he'll focus. He just, and, and put all this detail in here. Now, he, he's looking at a, a reference, but professional artists will tell you he shouldn't be able to do that. No. Even with a reference. And if you saw the drawing, the art he brings home from school, come here, Tiger. Um, it looks like a little kid did the art that he brings home from school. I mean, his school is really the best advocate for homeschooling your kids. Um, they, they don't care about teaching him art. His art teacher last year was a great teacher and she quit and in part because they wouldn't let her teach Tiger. Um, wow. She she was uh, the biggest uh, influence we had to even take him to a Comic Con because she said, take him to MegaCon here in Orlando when he was eight years old. I said, you kidding me? <laughs> There's yeah. like 130,000 people go to that show. We'd never been to any show. That would be a little overwhelming for so sure. So MegaCon was yeah. our first ever show. And, and MegaCon said, we didn't even know if you're going to show up. I mean, uh, and, and what he was doing at that show, which is about a year and a half ago, it looks... It looks vastly different than what he's doing now. What he's doing now is just on an insane level. All I can say is in April last year, he started doing this crosshatch style, like like this Mickey Mouse, this crosshatch style. Okay. And then in uh, June, Dirk Wonderlick said, draw it upside down. So he did this on Tampa TV 9 a couple months ago on TV. And then uh, the, the next big thing for him was in October, a caricature artist at Magic Kingdom asked him to draw a caricature. Now, we had been trying to get him a teacher to teach him caricature for over a year. Yeah. And we run into problems in that, you know, caricature artists aren't teachers. And when sure. they think about, I'm going to teach an autistic artist, you know, they have visions of what that might entail. And maybe they don't want to be involved. I, I don't have any problem with that. Mm, but yeah. this artist said, well, just have him draw something, okay? So this is Tiger's first ever caricature. It got a blue ribbon at the State Fair. Oh, my God, I oh, saw wow. that. Mick first Jack. ever. Now, it, it's, a, it's a copy of another drawing, but as caricature yeah. artists would tell you, he, he shouldn't be able to do that. I agree. That's so, incredible. Yeah. We, we showed incredible. that to the artist and, and, and at Magic Kingdom, he freaked out. <laughs> and um, 
couple of his mentors are um, famous for caricature. One is Steven Silver, and he did a character design for like uh, Kim Possible and um, Jane Silent Bob and stuff like that. And he was caricature artist of the year one year. And I asked him because there was a caricature convention happening in Orlando in two weeks, two weeks after he drew Mick, uh, Mick Jagger. And I said, should we take him to that convention? And he's like, hell yeah, take him there. Yeah. And then we befriended Tom Richmond, who uh, is famous from Mad Magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turns out he also has an autistic daughter, 33. And we asked Tom, you know, Tom was two time caricature artist of the year, president of ISCA, you know, president of the National Cartoonist Society, big guy. I yeah, said, should we take Tiger to this convention? And he said, hell yeah, take him there. So we took him. And it was wow. it was the best thing ever for him because at Comic Cons, it's just, you know, all the artists there, they're, they're, they're trying to pay the bills. They're trying to sell stuff. They're, you know, they're, they're competing. You know, artists can say, well, we don't compete. But yeah, they're competing. You know, they, they mm -hmm. got to pay the bills. And so they don't have time to really spend time with Tiger and, and help him and, and, and show him things. Sure. But at the caricature convention, it's it's closed to the public. It's just artists. And 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 these guys, you know, they would come over and just marvel at what he's doing. They, I mean, obviously they thought I was the artist. Um, and Iska actually made me <laughs> sign up. Uh, they had no provision for a child to want to <laughs> yeah, sure. sign up as a participant. Yeah. Um, and he's very competitive. And he would see what everybody else is doing, and he wanted to be better. He wanted to do better. Now, obviously, he's a little kid. He's not a, a professional artist, but he has the potential. And, yeah. and, uh, and one of the events they do there is they uh, have 40 different artists draw the same person. And they do it like three or four times and try to decide who can make the best likeness. Mm -hmm. But that opened Tiger's eyes to there's 40 different ways you can draw a person. And he and, got to see them all, though. Wow, that's fantastic. And he got to see all these different styles and his people drawing these far out, you know, caricatures. And so he started experimenting. He started doing cubism and, and other things. And uh, it really opened his eyes. And then he uh, started doing mashups. Now, we had been trying to get him to do mashups for a while, but I think he finally understood that he could he could draw his character, the autistic tiger, like Mickey Mouse. OK, like the same uh, pose and, and stuff like that. But it's the autistic tiger. And uh, that that was the biggest takeaway from that convention. It just opened up his eyes to what was possible. Yeah, I bet. Wow. It's it, it's fascinating. I love the fact that you guys and by the way, people can't commission him to to do artwork. And if, if they go to your Instagram page um, and, and, and again, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. But if they go and, and see the go to the autistic tiger dot com and um, and see more fascinating artwork, uh, Dave, I, we're running out of time, unfortunately, um, as we get through this. But this is so fascinating. And Tiger, you are just amazing absolutely amazing and again i've been around some award-winning comic book artists and i've never seen the kind of artwork like like this with 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 no <laughs> no training it's absolutely incredible um and and i wish we could talk longer we just have to we're, we're done we're, we're we're almost out of out of time so or sean has to is going to ask you a question and then we're gonna and then we'll do a little wrap up um, okay so sean go ahead and and yeah this is the part of the show where we ask the following our ability to change the world um, is dependent upon our, our our willingness or ability to change ourselves. So if you can, Dave, give us an example of a belief or a thought that you once really strongly believed, but now no longer believe to be true. And I'm always anxious to hear the answer, but given the story that you've told us about, you know, your path and Tiger's as well, I'm twice as anxious to hear that answer. <laughs> I mean, I, I used to be really focused on money. I mean, um, when I came out of school, I mean, it was like a big deal for me. I, I drove a fancy sports car and I had a two bedroom apartment and stuff like that. And, and, you know, since we've had Tiger, you know, I, I just thought it doesn't matter what I have. It doesn't matter how much money I have. What matters is, is Tiger gonna, what's his life going to be like when he grows up? Is he going to be able to get a job? Is he going to have skills? Is he going to have to be 
family institution. So we yes. have spent our life savings to make this dream possible for him. Now we're doing this in the age of COVID. Um, I haven't worked in five years um, and, and we, we keep paying the rent. Um, um, but we, I mean, we had no idea he's gonna be this good. I mean, oh my God, the last year has been just outrageous. Um, but I, I just want Tiger to have the training and have as a professional artist when he grows up. Because if he's not a professional artist, I really don't know what he would do. Maybe he could be a, a Disney hires a lot of disabled workers. You, you just never know. But since he's gotten so good with his art, I mean, our expectations have, have changed for him. Yeah. And right. uh, we, 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 we never dreamed that we would be autism advocates. We never dreamed that people would be asking our opinion about autism or, or things related to that. You know, since he blew up on Instagram, we get a lot of messages from people that say Tiger's inspiring and they want to know how their kid can do art or how they can help their kid, um, you know, develop whatever their talent is. And I, I just tell them, right. you, yeah. you gotta, you gotta know your kid. You, you gotta watch them and, and you gotta, you gotta look for that one little thing like we did. And then when you find out what it is, just feed it to them. You know, and 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 kind of put your personal goals aside, and, and you know, we only have Tiger, but just restructure everything to to make it as as give him as much opportunity as possible. Excellent. You've definitely fed it, and he's definitely thriving on it. And uh, you know, I wish the you, you all tremendous success, Tiger. You are amazing, and. And it's such a beautiful artist. So, Dave, this has been a great, uh, a great conversation. I knew it was going to be inspiring and 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 blow and blow away us and a anybody who's listening. But uh, thank you for sharing your time. And Tiger, you sat through the whole thing. I was fantastic. I love it. Hopefully, it was interesting interesting for you as well. Tiger, do you like do you like a, do you like this? This is his plushie. I love it. You got to get his plushie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, so he's got his own plushie. Yeah, so he's got own, a, yeah, a plushie of the autistic yeah, he, yeah, he has his own apparel line. Yeah, Excellent. there's a lot of ways that people can support uh, can support Tiger and the work that he's doing, um, and and all of that can be found on on the site on the autistictiger.com. So, um, really fantastic conversation, and 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 we have to. I, I wish we could talk for another hour because it was it's fascinating. Well, but let's do it again. We absolutely. We will. We're going to we follow you and follow your progress. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to have you guys on again. This is really amazing. So um, we'll, we'll close out by thanking everybody who has caught us live on, on Facebook. And if you see us after the fact on YouTube, uh, all of the links to all of the Instagram, YouTube page, uh, the link tree, it's all on our, in our show notes, please go and support um, the work that Tiger is doing. And uh, I would say anybody who's, you know, catching us on podcast outlets and the, and the, out on the radio, WSTX AM radio down in Virginia, I'm sorry we went over our hour. Um, but <laughs> thank you all for, for listening and participating and sharing your comments. And um, uh, now more than ever, uh, love and empathy is more important uh, to make this world a better place. Empathy, never know what somebody's going through. So don't be judgmental, be, you know, be curious. Find out, know somebody's going through something, be empathetic. Have some empathy for those around you. You don't know the situation. And if you look at the world through the lenses of love, the world's just a better place. So with that, I'm going to throw it to Sean to close us out, and we'll, we'll wrap up today. And Dave and Tiger, thank you so much for sharing yourselves today. Really, I'm honored to have been part of this conversation. Sean. Yeah. Dave and Tiger, thank you so much, and welcome to the family. Um, for those of you that are watching, like Brian said, questions are more powerful than statements. Everybody needs to be seen or heard. Let's try and be a little more childlike and less childish. And then we have the link um, for our forum in the in the uh, the chat as well for our men's group known as the Den. The, if you know anyone that is a dad or a caregiver to someone with um, special needs or a diagnosis, they may be a caregiver to the elderly. They may even be an aide or a teacher in special education. We've created a men's group. Had our first gathering virtually this past Sunday. Um, we plan to go uh, once a month and. Before we were halfway through, one of the gentlemen said, you know, I think I need this a little more often than once a month. So we'll be meeting every two weeks. The next one is the 7th of May, 10 a.m. Pacific. It is uh, 
The link is in the chat. And wherever you are within the sound of my voice, we love you. Thank you. We love you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.